South Carolina kept showing up at the bottom or near the bottom of national education rankings. We kept wondering why, what are the factors, what makes us so different? We named the series Minimally Adequate after the language the state Supreme Court used to describe um, the education standard for South Carolina. Um, our constitution doesn't define what the standards for education are and they basically said because it doesn't define that, we're going to interpret that to mean that you just need to have a minimally adequate education. I think we all have a vested interest in schools doing better. You know, I grew up here and early on you absorb the stigma that South Carolina education is in the tank. You know, we're, we're down we're 48th to 50th. There's a lot of talk about uh, labor shortages and a tight labor market in South Carolina. Um, and so we want to understand what role does education play in that. And I think what we realized is that it has a really important impact on, on, our, on our economy and sort of our future vitality as a state. And we wanted to produce something that was able to draw attention to a number of issues. Um, essentially put everything in one box so that people could see the enormity of the problem. We had a five-person team that reported on this and went all over the state, and then we had 15 to 20 other folks back here working to tell these stories in compelling ways through interactive graphics, through digital media, through videos, through photographs. So we decided to take a really close look at the history of the state, at uh, the impact of students who are ill-equipped for the job force on our economy and businesses, we wanted to take a close look at the legislature and why a systemic change has not occurred uh, for decades. And we wanted to present a set of solutions. The reaction has been uh, phenomenal. We've gotten calls, emails, letters from throughout the state, from powerful state leaders, from teachers, from parents, uh, from industry groups uh, saying that, that we'd really hit the nail on the head. I think that some educators felt like they had been heard, which was, I think, encouraging. One of the things that I've heard a number of times is thank you for putting it all in one place. I knew it was a problem, but I didn't realize all of this. People in the past have heard that there was going to be education reform, and it didn't lead anywhere. After the series ran, though, uh, the head of the budget writing committee in the House started talking about retooling the state's funding formula. The governor's office said that he planned to make it a prominent part of his State of the State address and his budget this year. We started hearing from folks throughout the legislature, including the House Speaker, saying that this was the year for education reform. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's always a lot of interest in education sort of as a moral issue or as a sort of a societal need. But I think that the timing of it with the sort of the labor market as tight as it is and with South Carolina attracting the, the manufacturers and companies that it is, the timing is sort of ripe um, for, for a change. This kind of journalism is so important across the state. We found n numerous reports that have been done by academics who are extremely knowledgeable of the problems. Um, the legislature certainly has been aware that education is a problem in South Carolina. But what good journalism can do is it can highlight these problems and call people to the mat when necessary.